Hello. All right, so we're going to be using the same tutorial that we used for the spawning bullet for this one. And I want to talk about optimality a little bit. So this, if you recall, this is the one we had. We shoot with little green pellets, and that's what's happening. So uh, a couple things I changed. One, let's go click on player, um, scroll down. Uh, here we're going to set interpolation rotation factor to 30. This will snap it to the rotation much quicker, which is better. For sync angular velocity, and we only need uh, top down. The other thing we did is I right click, create new physics material. And I set the dynamic friction and static friction bouncing us to zero. So we'll explain why I had to do this in a moment, but I just basically create a frictionless physics material. Again, pause the video from going too quickly. We click on the player. Um, we want to apply this to the, the capsule collider, this new physics material. And this will make our character just go on forever until we stop it or give it a different velocity. Other than that, that should be adequate for now. So if I run let me go open this real quick and comment some stuff out. So I'm going to So this should be the code that you had. If I go to window, I can add the profiler. Profiler and I can add it to my little window here. So I'm gonna say build and run this, and you have to have at least one client connect in order to see really what's gonna happen. So when I run this, client host, and then here I can click on this and join it. Now, the moment I do this, I'll start, I'll get some traffic, and that's okay. We can see the different types of traffic, and right now, unbuffered message in seems to be the one getting the biggest attention. Uh, if I go down network operations, you'll see, however, I'm getting commands, but I'm not sending any. Neither player is pressing any keys, and I'm getting commands. This is really bad. And it'll, so now I rotate, move. You see that the commands aren't changing, so it doesn't matter if I'm moving or not, I'm each player is sending their commands. This will not scale. Uh, it looks low right now, and two players it is, but it, this is not a linear scale. So if you know three players, it might be 50, four players, it could be up to 100. I'm not entirely sure what the scale is, but I know that you don't want to go above 50. And you start getting really bad lag at that point. So we want to fix this where you don't have these packets being sent wastefully. There's no reason to send these packets. So let's stop it and let's look through our let's look through our, our code and see what's happening. So regarding optimality, there are three basic things to look out for that are easy enough. And we've talked about this. The first one is you do not want timers to be sync bars. Whether they're float timers or integer timers, every time this changes, you're going to be sending a packet. A timer is consistently changing. Therefore, you'll be consistently sending a packet. Now, in this case, we're not actually subtracting from this timer, so it'd be OK. It would be like if we wanted to decrease our reload time as we leveled up, this would, this would be a property versus a timer. I'm talking about something that's going to continuously be subtracted, you know, time dot delta time. That you do not want to make a sync bar because that will add a huge amount of overhead. The other thing you want to do is you want to minimize sync bars. Now, you, this one's a judgment call because minimizing sync bars makes your life more, com uh, more complicated. Uh, but in a case like this, int HP, we're not going to be losing HP every other second, so it hopefully. So this is probably okay. This is, uh, and when it does change, it'll be few and far between. So it's not going to add too much traffic. The more you know, tricky elements. We'll come back to what these variables are in a moment. Sorry, is this one right here? 
So remember last time we were talking about this, we, I said that uh, can shoot, we can make this a sync bar. And I could, just, and it, at worst, it would be changing every half second. That's not horrible. Um, so I could make this a sync bar, and then down here, when I did my shoot, I instead of instead of running instead of running having this code, I would just call command shoot, and I'd let the server deal with it, and the server would set command shoot back to true, and the client would use that. As an easy solution, I can add, insert these five lines, and I now no longer need can shoot to be a sync bar. So I'm reducing the number of packets I need. I'll be honest, if the solution was any more complex than this, I probably would have just made can shoot a sync bar. So it sticks one way half a dozen the other. Uh, in this case, it is possible that I'll be sending a packet every half second if this was a sync bar. That's not horrible, especially if I, I'm keeping a lid on how many sync bars I need to send, um, but just something to keep in mind. So this is one of those judgment calls. Again, like if, if, you, if you can minimize a sync bar by adding one or two lines, that's probably worth it. If you need to add two or three pages of code uh, to minimize a sync bar, only if that sync bar is continuously changing would that be worth it. As in this case, it would not be worth it. So this is one of those judgment calls you need to think about. Like, but you want to try, if possible, to minimize how many sync bars you really have. Because every sync bar you have is another packet you're going to be sending. The third case, the third situation that I showed you earlier is commands. Now, right now, this is what you have. You have the X move and Z move. And then we're going to have a command move. So this is always calling, regardless if I'm inputting anything or not. Or, more importantly, regardless if my inputs change, this is always calling. This is bad. This is wasteful. So there are a couple ways of changing this. If you are simply moving up and down and the vectors you're creating are completely um, set from the inputs, then you can use the network transform. And if you're a client, you can look at the sync target sync velocity. So I can compare, and this is only the linear velocity, not the angular velocity. I can compare what direction I might be going, what I think I'm going, compared to what my target sync velocity is. In our case, we cannot do that because we're using a transform.forward. And here's the bad part of Unity. If you are a client, not the host, but if you're a client, your rigid body values and your transform values are not going to be accurate. The, the transform will be close but it will not be accurate, super accurate. So here, this, uh, this becomes kind of, uh, we can't use this, this trick in this case because we're using a transform.forward to set our forward velocity. If I was just moving left, right, up, and down, I could use this trick. So this one won't work. I just thought I'd mention that. So again, if you're a client, the rigid body, anything you get from rigid body, and anything you get from transform is not going to be accurate. So the best thing we can do, and actually the simplest, uh, is to use an old, uh, have old X and old Z values. We set them up as our, as our um, class variables. And then we check to see if the velocities we've entered are different. So I've subtracted my command. I, call, I don't call my command here. If I'm the server, I'm just going to head and call the command. Uh, that's not a big deal because the server is not, I actually could take this out now because I'm not using the network transform, so I don't even need that anymore. Uh, the reason I had that in there is because the server cannot read network transform. The network transform will not be correct on the server. So if you use this code with the network transform, then you have to say, if it's if the server, go ahead and call it, which is okay because that's not a TCP IP call, but this is actually more optimal now. And if it's not the server, uh, then check to see if the network transform is the same velocity as what you're inputting. But in this case, we're just saying if my current X move does not equal the old X, or the current Z move does not equal the old Z move, go ahead and call the command, and then update my old X and my old Z. 
So now, I'm going to run this real quick. Just make sure I didn't break anything. Okay, move. Everything's good. You can see here my command is are now only happening when I change it. Um, and then, if I file, build, and run, This will be the server. This will be the client. And now you'll see, hold on a minute. So this is the initialization. Now I rotate. I'm holding it down. Notice that I don't have, um, I only have one command. I let go, I have one command. I move forward, I have one command. I move backward, or I stop, I have one command. I move backwards, so I'm moving backwards. I have one command. I stop. I have one command. So now I've really, really reduced the number of commands I'm sending, and this and my scale is five, which is amazing for having two people. So this is the best way to optimize your program for multiplayer is to have a minimized number of commands you need. So Every time you send a command, you need to have some sort of condition around it stating whether or not that, if this is necessary on the client side. You don't want to do it on the server side because you've already sent the command, so it's kind of a waste. So on the client side, you need to have a condition to make sure that this command is necessary. For the can shoot, we already have it. So we have can shoot, this is a Boolean. Uh, I have my input. If both are true, then I call my command immediately after I set my boolean to false and I wait for my time to reload. So automatically, this command is only going to be called when I can shoot. So this makes, uh, this is already as optimal as it's going to get or close to it. I think it's actually op optimal as it's going to get. So again, you only want to call commands if you absolutely need to. This will decrease, or this will eliminate pretty much any performance problem you're going to have in this class. A lot of people in the past semesters have had real issues because they're continuously sending commands and they're continuously, um, and the, the traffic was just way too intense, even for something as small as a four-player game. So that's a quick talk about optimization.